This video demonstrates the use of Google Earth to browse data obtained with NASA's ICE Cloud and Land Elevation Satellite, or ISAT. ISAT carries one instrument, the Geoscience Laser Altimeter System, also known as GLASS. The GLASS laser shoots short pulses of light at the Earth and records the reflected radiation. The footprint illuminated on the surface of the Earth by the laser is approximately 70 meters in diameter, and these footprints are spaced at 170 meter intervals along the ground track. The main objective of the ISAT mission is to measure changes in the ice sheets of Greenland and Antarctica. Secondary objectives are to measure clouds and aerosols, land elevation and vegetation cover, and sea ice thickness. NSIDC, the National Snow and Ice Data Center at the University of Colorado in Boulder, archives and distributes ISAT data. Since it was launched in 2003, GLASS has produced over 1.5 billion laser shots. NSIDC is exploring ways to help users more easily locate, evaluate, and order ISAT data. NSIDC calls this experiment Visage, the visualization of ISAT shots in Google Earth. Our idea is to present the glass laser footprints as disks over the imagery in Google Earth. In this way, a user can see the features on the Earth's surface illuminated by each laser shot. Corresponding to each disk, we draw a similarly colored pushpin which, when clicked, displays a plot of the return pulse received by the satellite. In our experiment with Google Earth, NSIDC limited the data displayed to a 5 by 5 degree square around Anchorage, Alaska. This area was chosen for the diversity of snow, ice, water, tundra, forest, and urban surface types present. Glass is operated in 33-day campaign periods. Each campaign, labeled Laser 1A to Laser 3J, contains between 10 and 18 orbit tracks in our 5 by 5 degree box. When viewed from a distance in Google Earth, only a subsample of the data are displayed, allowing the coverage of the orbits to be seen without having to draw every footprint. Disks for individual shots are loaded once the user has zoomed in to a sufficiently small area. To package the data, the 5 by 5 degree box was divided into 2,500 bins, each one tenth of a degree on a side. For each campaign, a file was created for every bin that had footprints in it. Each bin file contains up to 3,500 footprint disks, along with the place marks that link to the return pulse image for that shot. The laser pulses transmitted by glass are 5 nanoseconds in duration. The distribution through time of the energy reflected back by the surface features and intervening atmosphere is called the waveform. All the data derived from glass laser shots is based on the timing, intensity, and shape of the waveform. Since the satellite repeats approximately the same ground track each campaign, it is possible to detect changes in surface elevation over time. A major limitation of laser altimetry from space is clouds, which can interfere with or prevent receipt of the return pulse from the surface. The primary effect of clouds is to scatter the return signal, requiring the onboard computer to apply a high gain. Another problem that interferes with accurate determination of elevation is detector saturation. The GLASS instrument team has written into the data product various quality flags and parameters to help users determine whether the data from any given laser shot is usable. NSIDC has chosen two factors, the gain and a saturation flag, to color code the footprints and place marks. Laser shots with low gain and no saturation are colored green. A shot having high gain but no saturation is possibly affected by clouds and is colored blue. Saturated returns are either yellow if they have low gain or red if they have high gain. A fifth color, white, is used to designate footprints for which no waveform image is currently available. Flags and parameters are helpful, but inspection of the waveform is necessary to fully interpret and quality check the elevations produced by glass. This is why NSIDC has made it possible to view waveform images for each footprint by clicking on the corresponding place mark. It is important to remember that the background image being viewed in Google Earth was not acquired at the same time as the ISAT data. There may be clouds, seasonal snow, or changes in the surface features affecting what ISAT is seeing that will not be evident in the background image displayed in Google Earth.